happy Monday, everyone. Thanks for joining me. So tonight we are going to attempt to sew a circle into a square. I have not done this before. Uh, I got a whole plan. I think it'll work. Uh, let's give it a try. So thanks everyone for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, this is our first free week. So uh, we have a kind of a schedule for every week, what we work on. And the last week of the month is going to be our time to just work on small projects, try new techniques, get some unfinished projects out and done. It's just gonna be kind of our free week to play around. And uh, one of the things that came up in our group was this project. It's put on by the Quilt Museum. They're doing a block of the month and they were sewing a circle into a square. Uh, it wasn't applique. It was just sewn right into there. And uh, uh, there was some interest there and I had never done that before. So we're going to give it a try tonight. I'm going to actually use an embroidery. We are going to have that be in the circle and we'll frame that circle. And I'd like to make a pillow cover for this. So I'm, I'm stoked. I have a plan. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work yet, but we're going to, we're going to see how it plays out <laughs> tonight. Uh, and another thing just for tonight while we're live, uh, we're having a little giveaway. So, uh, for anyone who shares either on YouTube or on Facebook, you'll be entered into the giveaway and it is for, an embroidery kit from Penguin and Fish of your choice, plus our two new uh, little floss bundles here. We got the jewel tone colors and then also the uh, color of the year for 2021. These are based on the Pantone colors of the year. Uh, so two little, two little ones of those and a kit of your choice from penguinandfish.com. So that's, uh, again, if you share, uh, you'll be entered in for that. So. Thanks so much, guys. Let's get going. All right, here is everything for this project, I think. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. Uh, all right, so this is the pillow I'd like to cover. This is from a couch that we actually had <laughs> when I was probably a baby still, actually. And we kept the pillow covers, or the pillows, because they're so comfy. Uh, but I'd like to cover this. And I'm thinking, uh, I want to have the bunny. So this is a this is from my bunny embroidery kit. We had stitched this probably a couple of years ago on the on the Facebook Live here on the live stream, and uh, it's just been sitting around. Uh, so I thought that could be our circle, and then I found this Heather Ross fabric that I've been kind of I guess just saving. And I thought this could be the front of the pillow. So if we have this, you know, this would be the pillow. Ugh, so cute. And then it would have like the bunny in the middle as as like the circle. So it, it would actually kind of turn, it would look like this weird kind of vintage thing, like a 70s vintage, but kind of modern at the same time. So I think, I think this is my plan. <laughs> Hopefully this sounds kind of okay. If, if there's flaws in this plan, let me know, you guys, um, and we'll figure it out. And then I also found a couple greens. I thought we could maybe make like a cute little border uh, out of the green, like a little kind of trim almost. And then, you know, it could be used for the back. I'm probably just going to do like an envelope closure that you can open up and stick the pillow in. So anyway, that is my plan. Uh, I've also... Uh, got downloaded from the Quilt Museum from, this is their January 2021 uh, block of the month. So now we're not actually making the block. They're doing a circle in a square and they're actually making like a lot of fun details within the circle. We're just going to use their their template. So this is a free a free uh, download. So go make sure to check out their quilt the quilt museum block of the month and it might be something that you want to work on. I did put a link to that below. Uh, so be sure to check on that. So this is the template I'm going to use. Uh, I thought for the inner inner circle that this would be like just big enough to frame the um, the bunny. So the only thing that's going to be different on this is my 
rectangle, my pillow shape is going to be a different size. However, the inner side or the, or the circle part will be the same. So I'll just have to extend out these ends. So I think where we're going to start is, well, you know what? I think where we really should start is let's just measure this pillow. So now this is just, it's not even rectangle. I think I'm going to try and make it rectangle and then I'll just force the pillow into the uh, pillowcase when we're done and it'll just be, it won't be so loose. So let's just kind of get a quick measurement on here. I got my little tape so it could be, you know, a little bit more flexible. I could go around here. So yeah, 16 inches seems not quite enough. Let's see if I go really all the way out here. It's a little bit more than 17 inches, but I think I'm going to try and force it into 17 inches. I think that, I think this looks pretty good. And what about this way? So 17. Okay, force it into like a 15 inch. So let's call it, let's call it uh, 17 by 15. I'm going to just jot it down on here. All right, and I want it like the long way like this. So this will be 17 by 15 and uh, let's just add seam allowance. So let's add a quarter inch all the way around. That's 15 or 17 and a half by 15 and a half. I, I suspect based on this, it was probably actually a 16 by 18 uh, rectangle. That would kind of make more measurement sense, but we're gonna shrink it down a little hair here. Oh, Marie, Mary says it reminds uh, reminds me of a block from the first Splendid Sampler. I think we did do a block similar, but wasn't it applique? I thought we did one where we applicated on. Um, I'm just going to start out by cutting this out just so that they're ready to go. So I did not read the instructions for this. I did watch a video. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of assume we'll figure it out here. I do want to talk about one little aspect of this because I know there's several ways to do to do these uh, circles within the square sort of thing. Uh, but here, let, let's cut this out first. I don't know. I think this is going to be fun. Oh, uh, clean shared. Thank you. So again, if you guys are just popping in, we are having a giveaway. Uh, today I'll I'll announce it tomorrow, or I'll probably actually contact uh, I'll I'll direct message uh, the person, and um, I'll I'll let you know who wins tomorrow, uh, so we have time to to share. But uh, we are going to for every share. Uh, if you sh if you share this video basically during the live stream right now, uh, you'll be entered for the giveaway and it's going to be a kit of your choice plus our two new colors of um, embroidery floss here. I think that'll be fun. All right. And so these are the parts that will extend, but we're just gonna cut them here. All right, I just need to keep <laughs> I need to keep my little notation here, so that's going to go to the side. Uh, the rest of these little bits of paper I don't I don't really need. This might be a two day deal. Uh, it's one of those things that in my head it's going to only take like the hour, but I do want to put um, little edging and stuff on too, and that might take a little bit extra time. Awesome, you guys, I appreciate it so much. Your shares and likes and all that just really, you know, mean a lot to me for sure. All right, so let's just, I wanna go over one thing with, with you here. So a lot of people think um, when, I, when I wanna do curves like this, that, oh, I can just put like two pieces of fabric on top of each other and I can just slice the arc and uh, I can just put like the one color with the other. That is not exactly how perfect curves go. 
Um, so how it really is, is that you have to actually add seam allowance to the inner curve and the outer curve. So if we actually align this line without the seam allowance, that is as if we would have just cut straight there. So um, you do actually kind of need the template uh, to add that extra. You could actually cut a piece of, of, like you could probably cut a square and then cut whatever arc you want and then separate them and then add the seam allowance on either side. But luckily with these templates, it's kind of all done to us. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like a perfect fit in there because of the seam allowances. So that's just something to know. Um, you're actually adding the seam allowance on, on either side here. So, all right, let's uh, take a look at our fabric here. And I think I might just press it right away while I'm here. So this is what I want the inner circle. There's one, so instead of just jumping right in and uh, um, just cutting a circle, I wanna make sure that this is centered. You know, I'm not just using like a solid piece of fabric or something, I wanna have this, this centered. Lisa, I have a little program um, that should tell me who shared <laughs> on YouTube. I think there's a way to do that. So. Thanks a bunch, you guys. All right. So they're kind of pressed enough. We'll press it later. But so this is what I'm saying. Like we need, this is going to be our circle. But, you know, how do I find the center of it? Uh, I think what I'm going to do first is, I mean, I know I can fold it, but I kind of want to, I want to kind of, see what it'll look like in the center. So I, I have my ruler here. I know it's not a circle, but I'm just gonna try and center the ruler where I think the bunny should sit, like so it doesn't end up like too high or, or something. I think, you know, the bunny should probably be more centered than the whole piece. Cause like we just kind of added this extra speech bubble on here. Let's see, this is, six and a half inches, so three and a quarter would be the center. Three and a quarter. Maybe it should go down a little bit. I don't know, that, that looks pretty centered, right? I also, I have these vertical lines to deal with, so I wanna have it be vertical. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, let's, let's mark it at the three and a quarter mark here. So three and a quarter, three and a quarter. Because this is a six and a half inch square. So three and a quarter would be half. There, I think that's gonna help me know where to fold this and know where to match it up um, now on here. So, okay, I feel good about that. Um, I think while we're here, why don't we just go ahead and cut this one and then we'll work on that second piece. So what I'm going to want to do, this is a circle that's folded in half, like it's a quarter of a circle here. So that's what I want to do here as well. So I'm just going to fold this on my lines. I wonder if this should be pressed too. I think we can just finger press this and it'll be enough. So there, there's my first two lines. Let's get this nice and straight. Oh, how about rough cutting out the bunny? I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of extra here, isn't there? I think, I think I'm going to just fold. Oh, you know what I should do? I should fold it this way first and then fold it the other way so I can have the lines on both. So, all right, I'm just kind of finger pressing it so I get that fold. And now let's go this way too and get this second fold, like where it should go so I can see both lines. Let me know if any of you have done this before, sewn a circle into a square, like it's not appliqued, just, um, just, uh, 
actually sewn in. All right. Actually, I wonder if we even need to... Like, I'm a little scared of folding this and then cutting. I would rather kind of, kind of just trace around. So I think I'm going to just use, you know, the guys that we just folded in. So this guy will go here. I'm aligning it with my fold lines that I just did. Yeah, yeah, we're doing it this way. This feels safer to me than folding it up and cutting. So let's, let's do that. I just have my water soluble marker here. You can use a pencil or anything really. Probably wouldn't want a dark marker because this, you, you might be able to see this later. So there, there's, there's one corner. Let's line up the next. I have that fold line down here. There's my line. There we go. So if I had just like a solid piece of fabric, I, I might have just folded this into quarters and cut it in quarters, but just cause, you know, I wanna double check that it's all nice and being a little <laughs> putsy with, with uh, the bunny here. There we go. Oh, I'm so happy I'm finally doing something with this embroidery. Oh, Janice is saying, I'm eager to see the magic happening. Me too. I mean, this really, I did watch a video video on how to do this. And I rewatched it tonight just to make sure I had everything in the right spot. Um, and it is kind of magic. I, I'm, I'm, I, I have a hunch that I might like this, like, like doing this, like the process that I'll want to, you know, actually do it again sometimes. So that's, that's what I hope. I hope it's as fun as it is in my head. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, but uh, I'm excited about the finished pillow covering. And I'm excited to use that Heather Ross fabric, really. All right, we got our inner circle. I think that freaking framed this bunny just perfect. I, I mean, like, it's just the right amount of edge. I mean, there will be, you know, we'll lose a quarter of an inch for the seam allowance, but oh, this is great. I'm excited. Let's cut it out. So uh, I'm just going to cut it out with the scissors. That seems the safest thing to do, I suppose. All right, gosh, I'm losing a lot of fabric because I kind of stitched this right in the middle. I think I was originally intending this bunny to be um, a notebook cover, but we'll do that again. We'll do a notebook cover with a different design. All right, I am trying to cut really nicely here because this edge is what's going to line up with that other seam allowance. So I do want to be good with it. Ah, teacher told me turn the turn the paper, not the not the scissors. So <laughs> we'll rotate my fabric. I know I've said that before. That was an aha moment of of kindergarten when I was cutting something out, and the teacher said, "Move the paper, not the not the scissors." That was mind blowing. <laughs> ah, I, every time I do this, I like use the scissors and rotate. You know the fabric or the paper. I always think about that. I might have to refold these lines a little bit. I kind of, well, well, we'll refold them and I'll probably pin them as well. So I think um, Vanessa from from Crafty Gemini is doing some circles like this too, and she's not using any pins. So I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. So I think we'll use, <laughs> we'll, we'll try, try it with pins first. I think this is the correct line. Yeah, so, you know, there's that first line and the outer line. The outer line is the um, the part that includes the seam allowance. Yeah, so here we go. We have the, this is where it'll actually be sewn. And then, yeah, we're cutting on the outer line. Same, same here. This inner line is where it'll be sewn. And then this includes the seam allowance. So, yep. This did, did include the seam allowance. And again, that template is a free template from 
uh, from the quilt museum. So I did put a link below. Oh, and Sally, so this, this, uh, so the pattern, the circle, the template is from that, um, the quilt museum. And this bunny is one of our embroidery kits, the bunny embroidery kit, uh, that we just, I stitched up with different colors, colors that I had and fabric that I had, obviously. And then we added the little speech bubble to it. We stitched this, oh my God, do you think it's been about three years? Maybe three years ago here? What? Nah, probably, <laughs> maybe two years ago. We did stitch this live though. And I was going through some of my embroideries cause I knew I wanted to do an embroidery for this. And uh, saw this guy. I'm like, you might be just right, bunny. Okay, there's our circle. I'm just gonna toss that fabric to the side. Uh, I think I am gonna want to refold this because I can't see this vertical fold very well. But these these look nice. Actually, let's let's just do that. Let's do it right now. So I'm gonna line up the two folds that I have here. Yeah, and then let's just fold again there fold again here just I'm finger pressing it I just want to see those bits there and actually we could do the points in the middle too so I'm just gonna fold it in half again where I'm just matching both lines here both fold lines I think if we get close we're gonna be fine all right okay so I'm kind of getting it so it's, I got like markings on, like eight markings that I can line up. Oh, awesome, Sally. Sally says she's ordering the bunny pattern. Yeah, it's, figured it was getting to be spring or it felt like we it, we went out for a little bit today and it was it just started to feel like it was sunny and you could feel that like melt in the snow which you know <laughs> is tricking me because I know it's way too early for that but uh I can pretend that it's almost spring all right so I have like eight fold marks here so I should have this kind of divided up pretty well so I'm gonna match those lines later when we do the same thing on the larger piece but for now um I'm done with this guy I think this is gonna look awesome though I think this is just gonna be so cute oh let's let's get a sense of what it's gonna look like now now that we have it cut as a circle too so this is gonna be my outer fabric this is that Heather Ross fabric and it'll actually yeah, it'll be about this big here <laughs> I think it fits just right it's gonna be like you know this weird little vintagey throwback but still kind of modern sort of look to it I think it's gonna be really fun and then like edged edged with this dark green oh this pillow is gonna be the cutest thing ever when we're when we're done with it I think this dark green is gonna be really 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 pretty so okay let's like I said let's throw this to the side um I need to press this and we need I gotta get, I gotta look at my notes again. Okay, we need a 17 and a half inch piece by a 15 and a half inch piece because that's the side of, this, of my pillow. Gosh, while we're at it, we should really cut the back too, shouldn't we? Um, I could cut the sides too right away too. Let's do all of it. Um, all right, so on that note, um, I need to cut a 17 and a half by 15 and a half of this, and then for Let's just do some pretend stuff like we know what we're doing here. Uh, for the back, the back I kind of want an envelope. So what I mean by that is you have a piece, you know, I'll, I'll draw it on here. So we'd have a piece that goes a little over halfway and another piece that goes a little bit over halfway. And then we, we sew it all together and then it becomes like a little pocket that we can stick our, um, our, um, pillow in and it has like a little you know gap or a little like um buffer to hold it together so I don't know how big should that buffer be maybe like I don't know three inches three inches maybe a little bit big maybe it's that it's oh, it's a pretty flat pillow so I don't see it bulging out so let's just add two inches so let's let's divide this in half 
and add two inches. So, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So let's call this 18 inches. So that's, let's do it nine inches and we'll add the two inches. Let's pretend that includes seam allowance, <laughs> which it kind of does. So um, nine, 10, 11. So we'll do 11 inches and then it's still the same height by 15.5 inches. That should do. All right, so I need a piece. So I think I'll do, if I can, I'll get that both out of this lighter green. I'm literally figuring this out now. So I'm not doing a zipper pillow. I've never done a zipper pillow though. I need to try that sometime because I have a, I have a, a seat cushion I want to recover that requires a zipper. We're just doing a simple envelope pillow, I think, for this, though. Oh, I need room to, like, fold over the edge, though, too. So let's... And this 11 should go here. Let's make it 12 inches, and then I can fold over the one. But I don't think I have 12. That'd be 24 inches. And I don't have that much in a fat quarter. We're going to just cut the fat quarter in half, and that's how wide it's going to be. <laughs> will be fine. Uh, all right. So we have that. And then I need, I want to do this little edging. And how I'm going to do the edging is I'm actually going to take, I think like an inch wide strip and fold it in half and then sew it right in. I think that's just going to be cute. I've done that before. So we need two, two pieces that are 17 and a half inches by one inch and then two pieces that are 15 and a half inches by one inch. Okay. I got a plan, people. <laughs> uh, let me know if this all seems legit to you guys yet. Again, I'm looking at your comments uh, when I can and uh, yell if it's, uh, yell if something is way, way, way off. But I think I got a plan. So let's let's press everything. We'll cut everything, and then we'll chop a hole in the middle of this. That'll be the last little pit. So, and just a reminder, we are doing a the giveaway yet. Uh, if anyone new came in, so uh, the giveaway is if you share either on YouTube or Facebook. Um, we're on both. We stream live on both. Uh, You'll be entered to win an embroidery kit of your choice, and this bunny is is one of those, if you wanted to do the bunny. Uh, and you'll also get our two new super cute colors for um, our embroidery floss here. We got the jewel tones and the color of the year one there. And if we get a bunch of people in here, we might even we might even do two. So um, we'll have a couple winners probably. I don't have cording, so this is kind of like a fake piping, Gina. Um, I think my mom did this once for a thing, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. So I, I I do remember ages ago doing this for a pillow or two. So I'm going with the memory of the concept really right now. All right. Uh, let's just set that to the side. I'm gonna press these guys too quick, and then we'll then I'll chop them up. Ooh, look how pretty this is! This is a beautiful green. Okay, so this does not look like a fat quarter either. Um, ugh, so do we even have a 17 and a half inch side to this? Let's let's see. And... Yeah, 18. Okay, so it's this is like an 18 by 18 square. Hmm. So, I wonder what this is. If this is 18 by 18, then this isn't going to be big enough for the enveloping. Yeah, because I'll need... Yeah, okay. Okay, this looks like a full fat quarter. Okay, good. Perfect. So that's great, because this is the one that I wanted for the back. But this I only need for the little edges. Uh, so good. We're great. This should not have been in my fat quarter uh, bin. That's what I... The um, 
Orophil Block of the Month from 2020. That's I, I was only allowed to use Fat Quarters from the bin. I had recently organized all my fabric, and any stray Fat Quarter that, that wasn't my own fabric, just, um, you know, other stray fa Fat Quarters, uh, those went in a bin, and that's where I got this these guys from, but that's not a Fat Quarter. This is an 18 by 18 square, which is not a normal, not a normal pre-cut size. Ugh, look at how beautiful this color is. This is going to be so pretty. I'm, I, I uh, pulled these colors out first because I'm like, oh, this will kind of go with the bunny. But then I saw the Heather Ross fabric and I was like, okay, it's time. It's time to use that. And these greens, I think, just go perfectly with it. This is nice. This is, this I need more of this. I don't know what, where this is from or what fabric it is, but it's, I mean, it's still quilting weight cotton, but it almost, I don't know, doesn't quite have a linen feel, but it has a, just like a, feels extra fancy. Oh, Sally says she likes Heather Ross too. Such cute fabric. Yeah, she's a favorite for sure. Oh, Lisa said that she just looked up um, Heather Ross fabric and it's super nice. Yeah, if you want, like, the cutest fabric ever, she's amazing. Okay, so this is here. Why don't we cut? Why don't we? We'll, we'll go backwards. We'll start cutting with this one and we'll end up with our nice rectangle. So, all right, this we needed what? Oh, I was going to cut it in half, and that was just going to be the size of the envelope. Um... Let's just see what that actually means here. Okay, that's 18, uh, 19, 20, 21, uh, sort of 22. I suppose we could keep the salvage if we, um, I don't know, I don't know. Let's, let's trim that off first. Let's trim our end. kind of fun doing these little on-the-fly projects where I kind of got a concept in my head of how, how it's going to go, but don't quite 100% know how it's going to go. I'm going to just cut off this salvage. Oh, I'm going to need a bigger ruler. I wonder if we should just fold it right away and then trim both salvages. Or both um, edges, I mean. So we have a nice, nice edge, and then that will be like our square, and then we can trim what we need from the side. I think that's what we'll do. We're actually going to be cutting this down the middle too. So we could actually just fold it as our guide. <laughs> oh yeah, happy Australia Day to all the. Lovely peeps here. So actually I need to have the the um, fold needs to be on the ruler nicely. So this ends up being straight. All right, I think that looks good like so. I do probably want to hem this a little bit, but I don't need to like hem it a bunch of times. Um, cutting glove. All right. Oh, there it is. I only had the, the righty. I need the lefty. <laughs> okay. Let's trim. I need a rotary cutter. All right, I did just change the blade on this today. So finally, um, finally have a new blade. All right, cute little bits. So I'm gonna rotate my whole mat here and I'm going to trim what, that 15 and a half, right? Yeah. All right, 
right, let's get a nice edge first. a little bit on that. Oh, for a new blade, this, I mean, I think this actually caught a couple times already. I wonder if I already have a nick out of this. I hope not. Okay, so 15 and a half. So I already have the half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ooh, that's cutting it kind of close. Let's see if that's correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and a half. I get paranoid. Paranoid with the um, cutting. We're going to use up this whole beautiful piece of green. All right. So last bit is we want to just cut this in half. You know, I might just cut it in half this way. Since this doesn't have to be perfect, I think I'm just going to like literally line up these edges and trim off the fold. Nothing wrong with that. I don't need this measured because I don't really care how wide the opening to this, this, um, this, uh, envelope is. So I'm just going to like trim. <laughs> ah, this, this is legit, right? I think, I think this is okay. Quilt police won't be mad. Ooh, I moved a little bit. There we go. All right, so this is just, if you guys aren't quite sure what I mean by this envelope thing, I think it'll be a little bit more clear here. So here's my pillow um, that I'm covering. So this is going to be the back of it. So one piece will go here, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll secure the edge. Like, we'll fold that over so it's like a nice little hem. And then the second one will go here, and we'll hem it again. And then we'll sew it so this, this top part will be sealed um, and this bottom part will be sealed too, but this part won't. So we'll be able to kind of open, go digging here, and then that's how we'll stuff the pillow in. But um, it should stay shut because it's kind of sewed at the top and bottom. So this is going to be the envelope. That worked well. I think that's going to be fine. And that gets sewn in when we sew the whole entire uh, pillow together at the end. Great. Um, so this is actually not really a rectangle, but I, I am going to just try and squish it in so that there's a little bit more. I think it's just like, this is so old. It's probably 30, eh, it's probably closer to 40 years old, this pillow. Uh, so it's, I'm sure it's stretched a little bit. All right, next up, let's cut our little edges. Um, I think I'm going to just cut four, um... I gotta turn my ruler again, my mat again, but I think I'm gonna just cut four one inch pieces here and uh, then we'll cross cut them to the smaller, smaller bit. First, uh, that one side needs to be 17 and a half inches, though, so I need to make sure that this is, this is good. Yep, we're fine. Barely, but we are. So I'm just going to cut four. Make it easy on myself. I have a little, little extra, but who cares? All those little extra bits I've been putting into, I've been improv piecing together, so they've been turning into other little projects. Or they will eventually. And these little these little bits like this, I've been using with the pom pom maker and um, winding them onto pom poms. And when when it's large enough, then I then I um, have a pom pom out of fabric. 
So this is just going to give me a little quarter inch edging around. It's kind of like piping that isn't actually filled with anything. And the, the, the corners will kind of curve in on each other. And um, I'll show you what I mean by that. But I think this is just going to be a fun, simple way of finishing this off. And I'm just kind of realizing how little one inch looks like. It's crazy small. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know. Not wild about this new blade. Wow, it's getting stuck in a few places. And again, okay, I might have to put a whole new blade on this. I don't like that at all. I'm just using the ruler as my guide, which isn't always great, but we're doing it. Hmm. That keeps happening with my rotary cutter tonight. We're gonna have to get a new one going. New blade on there. Yep. Boo! I think I might just separate it a little. All right, two more. <sighs> we can deal with a few more cuts. Surprise though, I just, it's a totally fresh blade. Oh, turn the blade around, that helps sometimes? That's interesting, okay, we'll give that a try. I'll do that after, after I cut this one and before I cut the other one. We'll have a lot of this dark green left over, which is great. It's a pretty color. I'll use it in another project. Boo. Ugh, fine, there we are. All right, so this guy is done. I don't need that fabric anymore. Uh, let's, actually, I am gonna do that. So this is one of those Ulfa uh, quick release ones. It's kind of cool. I always like doing this with a glove on. I don't know how you would do this without a protective glove. Uh, definitely, oh, make sure there's not a nick in the mat. Uh, well, I was doing it almost on every one, so I don't think it was a nick in the mat. But all right, this has a blade changer on the back here, so I'm just going to pull that down, and it pops the blade right out. Okay, so I need to kind of flip this around. I hate doing all this stuff. Blades are scary. All right, so I'm flipping it around. I should put a glove on this hand, too. All right, I think I will, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use my teeth. All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of grab this and set it on top. Right, that's the opposite way. <sighs> All right, let's give it a go. There, and then I can just flick that back on, and we're good to go again. We'll see if it. If, we'll see if that improves it at all. I do like that quick release on here, but you're still working with the blades. I don't. Okay, there's not two blades. I have done that before though, Kimberly. So what Kimberly's saying is make sure there's not two blades. I've done that where there's actually two blades on here, and you can't. You know, you can't hardly tell. And then when I'm cutting, I have all this frizz everywhere. I'm like, what the heck's going on? It's because I'm cutting two lines so close to each other, because uh, there's two blades on it that there was just some fluff. It turned into fluff, but nope, that's not the case this time, but I have done that for sure. All right, so I need two of these to be 17 and a half inches and two of them to be uh, 15. So I'm gonna just first, and I, and I need that first edge just kind of nice. We're gonna iron these the long way, but I'll wait till, I'll wait till later to do that. I wanna get to the circle. So it looks like today might just be a lot of prep for this, but I, I'm pretty confident that once we start sewing, this is gonna go like easy, like two minutes and, well, not two minutes, but pretty quickly. I would actually like to start sewing that circle, the circle t part tonight, but we might finish the rest of it later. This cutting always takes time. But I, I like I said earlier, I really, really love kind of 
having a concept in my head of like, eh, I think this could work. And then seeing how it plays out here with you guys. <laughs> and you guys always have great suggestions too. And um, definitely helps the process. Oh, Deborah said, I saw, I saw a product that would be nice if you could like stack them, stack the old you displays in. Oh, use the cut thread. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Haven't seen that before. Or I'm just going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and a half. So here's the 17 and a half ones. So these are the long sides. Okay, those guys are done. And this one was 15 and a half. So one, two, three, four. I know I could count backwards, but I, I'm too paranoid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen and a half. All right, that's done. So ultimately these pieces will be pressing in half like this and then sewing it in. So we're really gonna have just a tiny, tiny little edge um, sticking out here. Oh, we're even gonna have less than a half inch. Well, no, well, this is fold in half is the half inch and then a quarter. So these are a little shy of one inch, I think, but um, we'll sew them in and then we'll, It'll just be like this tiny little pretty edge that will just frame the pillow nice, I think. So this is just a detail for sure. But all right, those guys we won't need till way later. And now the nice big piece, let's trim this. So this we need the 17 and a half by 15. And that's basically gonna happen just by like cleaning up the edges um, a little bit. Glove back on. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of how I'd waste less fabric, but I suppose this doesn't really matter. Let's do the 15 inch one first, just because it's going to be easier on this mat, I think. So I'm, this this edge is a really crooked edge, so that's I'm kind of looking at that. We got to straighten that out. So we are going to get to this inner inside circle here, but I need the final shape of this because I'm going to have to fold this in half a few times like how we did the inner circle. Gosh, yeah, this was cut super crooked. Fun little piece of fabric though. All right, so this will be the 15 and a half and I'm going to count it out again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen and a half. So right at the end here. Ew. Should really rotate it around and cut, but we're gonna do it like this. Yeah, nope, I'm not. I'm gonna rotate it and cut. <laughs> so I have some more surface area on the ruler or on the mat. But it was that last half inch mark here. Okay. Good. Oh, it cuts so much better. Okay, that was a good suggestion. Uh, yeah, it looks like the blade, Kimberly saying looks like the blade is Fix. Yeah, turning it around did the job for sure. Ugh, that makes me feel good. All right. So, um, again, wanted to let you guys know that there, there's that giveaway. So if you share, you'll be entered to win. And it is um, an embroidery kit of your choice plus our two new fab or our, I'm cutting fabric. 
uh, two new embroidery floss groups, curated little groups that jewel tone in the embroidery of the month. So I'm just cutting off the selvage. There's a little bit of selvage there. You can tell because it has all those little dots in it. I don't know if you can quite see those. Um, they're kind of hidden on this fabric a little bit, but that's what the machine grabs to pull the fabric through. So it's stitched a little bit more densely so that machine can grab it. Um, and since it's a little bit more dense, it's not going to have, it's not going to react the same like in water and all that as the rest of it. So you do want to kind of cut that off. Okay, now this is that 17 and a half. Ooh, Jennifer, hopefully that goes well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, I'm gonna have to redo that. <laughs> so paranoid with cutting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I got a half over there. So right like so on this five inch mark here. Then we can cut our circle finally, our hole, basically. There we are. Nice. So I think I'm kind of done with that ruler for the night. Oh, it cuts so much better. Yay, so this is starting to look like our the size of the pillow we want, which is great. Let's just peek again. <laughs> it's gonna be so silly. All right, so this is gonna go in the center, uh, but we need to know where to cut that circle. So here's our outer template. So again, it's gonna extend this way and this way, but this the folds should match up. So let's fold this in half. So I do have like these pre-done folds, so I wanna make sure that I'm on the correct one. Oh, good, they're far away. So I'm just gonna match the ends. And you could totally not finger press this. You could do it with a real iron, then you'd have like really nice lines. All right, that's our first one. And now I'm gonna line up those two folds, like make sure that fold, the one that on this side and this side match up, plus, you know, the edge and everything too. It should, it should all match up fine. Okay, and look at all these happy little frogs on this fabric. So now this one I probably could just draw and then cut out, but we're gonna do it this way again. Same way, so I'm putting, so here's the fold and here's the fold. So here's where it extends obviously, and it's more on this side than this side because it's a different size. Um, we're not a square. We're gonna have like such a cute little circle cut out. We'll have to do something with that. All right, so I am drawing on the inside line now, so not not this one, you know, just where you where you cut it out. This is where we're gonna sew that line, but this outside line is the seam allowance. So I'm just trying to really get it on there. I actually might switch, since this is pretty close to the color, I might actually switch. This is a friction print pen, I don't use this very often, but. Um, I'm just going to kind of draw on the inside, and when I cut, I'll make sure to go on the outside of it. So I get all this cut off. But it'll disappear in the heat, and it won't be seen. It'll be part of the seam allowance, but I'll be able to see it on here a whole lot better. Okay, here's... This is our middle fold, I think. Yep. So again, I'm lining the folds. And again, if I was just doing a bunch of these, I think I could fold this into fours and then just like trim out the, the little corner, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not doing it that way. I think I'm just worried about keeping the size nice. I mean, I really should just fold it and do it, but ugh. oh well. That's the whole point of just having the, the template piece like this is that you can just fold it and do it. 
but oh well. I suppose we still could. Eh. If I really want it nice and perfect, though, I'll do it this way. <laughs> the inner battle of the evening. I don't think I got that all drawn on. So this will be a little bit smaller of a circle than our other one, and that's on purpose because it's got that seam allowance. All right, we're good. Now I'll just cut that out. Again, I could just fold it and then slice off the edge, but I'm not doing it that way. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of snip in. I'll snip in close to the close to the side. There we go. Make a little hole. Bigger hole, I guess. There. And I'm just going to go carefully along this edge. Again, I do want this as accurate as I can get right now. I'm going slow just because this is what's going to be matching up to the other one. And I'm going to do that fold again where I can get that the centers of these so like so I can get the eight points. And then I'm going to pin it all together. That'll be interesting. Now that I'm thinking about the pinning, that's going to be kind of goofy, but I think it'll be done. It's 9.28 here, you guys, so uh, I, I think we should pin it yet tonight. Should we pin it yet tonight? I think that'd be good to go. So I'm going to pin it yet. Uh, so this is the, again, we're doing that giveaway for sharing. So if you haven't done that yet, um, give that a go, and I'll do that. We'll do the drawing. Um, we'll let you know. Direct message you tomorrow. For that. So the prize again is uh, an embroidery kit of your choice plus our two new floss collections. There we go. Fun! Ugh, that's cute just as is. Alright, I feel good that we got all of our um, pieces drawn. I'm gonna just mark on here that these are the these are the lines because we have that other fold from the just from the fabric. I'm actually going to mark all of them. So we're going to mark that fold and this fold as well. I think I got it. Yeah. All right. So now I want that other um, quarter fold in there. So I'm going to kind of lay this flat and I'm going to try and match up those edges again. So my two markings here should go to the two markings here, or the fold lines, basically. Yeah, so like so. I can't do it like I would fold a rectangle anymore. Okay, that marking goes up here. Okay, so I'm going to 
put a little fold here because these folds we want to mark or match up with our bunny folds. And let's do it the other way as well. So this one matches here. It's kind of, it's actually kind of difficult on this fabric to see the folds and everything just because it is so patterned. And I don't think I folded them very brightly. Or I didn't, so I could see them very well. All right. All right, I'm ready to pin. Let's get this pin before all oh, these markings just disappear. So here's the top. And now the pinning's gonna be a little goofy because it's not like I can just stick this here and pin. Like we gotta do the right sides together here. So let's, uh, this is gonna be just, it's gonna look a, like a pile of crazy, but it's gonna come together. So. Here are the first two folds that match up. I actually have to go like this and match up that line. Huh, I wonder what the best, where the best place for the pin would be too. I think um, ultimately I'm gonna sew with the, this fabric on the top. So I'm gonna go from like underneath and then come up and then back like, like so. Again, yell if this seems crazy. There we go, and I think I can go like this way now. <laughs> so kind of a goofy process. Actually, I don't really need to fold it back. I could just kind of leave it. Let's do, let's do this one. Because we'll have this bulky one will be on the top and our circle, our um, bunny circle will be on the bottom. Okay, like so. And now we need those middle pieces. So it's okay to let this bunch up. It's going to, you actually want it to. Um, all right, so this guy matches up here. That fold and this fold. There, and we'll be just sewing around this edge. So I don't know, this this would be a lot of work, but like like I said, I'm gonna have to look at how Vanessa from Crafty Gemini, Gemini does this because I know she's doing some circles right now and she's not putting pins in at all. She's just looking at where her folds are and matching them up as she goes. So I guess like once you get, once you get good at this, maybe you don't need all these pins. Or maybe we can try this again without the pins, but we'll do it with the pins first. All right, I think we just need to match up two more little points. There, this fold and this fold. So the, the goofy thing with this is we're trying to make you know, the, the bunny has like this outside curve, but the, the Heather Ross fabric has an inside curve that we're trying to force to be the shape of an outside curve. So it's kind of an awkward thing, but it'll all turn out just great. So tomorrow we, we'll sew this up. Tomorrow I think we'll actually finish this whole thing, especially now that we have it all cut out. That was kind of the big bear of the day, I suppose. There we go. So it looks crazy, but like I said, we're gonna just start at one of these points and we are going to just 
move our fabric out of the way and have that circle be flat and we are going to just sew around this edge we're going to just keep turning and we're going to sew all the way around and our <laughs> little guy should be revealed on the inside like so when it's when it's done and ugh, look how cute it's going to be. So this is probably the best uh, look th of, that we've gotten so far. So it's going to be right in the middle, which I think is cute. And uh, yeah, then we have, we'll have this um, dark edging. So we'll just see just barely a hint of that. So let me move the, the mat and then we can get a little better, get a little better peek at that. There, so just, we'll just have like a hair of that dark, dark green. Let's see what it looks like here too. Ooh, that's just gonna be like a really itty bitty nice touch, that that green edging. There's a little bit of a darker green, the grasses and everything. Uh-oh, I lost a pin. Where'd you come from? Oh, maybe nowhere. <laughs> I still feel like I have all the pins here, so maybe I just got that off of the, um, the pin cushion. Don't want to be carrying that around with me. All right, there, that's going to be cute. And then we have, um, this will be the back color. Will be, will be that green. Ugh, I love it. This is going to be great. I'm so happy we're doing this, you guys. All right. Awesome. So thanks. Uh, thanks for letting me give this a try. I know um, this has been going around in the Facebook group a little bit, how to do this circle. I think this is, I could see doing this for, for a quilt, like how graphic and like pretty would that be? Just all these circles. Um, and it, I like that you can do stuff in the circle too. So it could be a patchwork. That's actually what the quilt museum uh, template where we got this template from, from the quilt museum block of the month, they are sewing together a bunch of strips for that center circle and then cutting the circle. Uh, so they're doing something similar, like a detailed, detailed circle. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see if you guys give this a try. Uh, that template is free from the, uh, the quilt museum. I did put that link below on the Facebook and the YouTube. So if you just read through that, it'll, it'll have that link. Uh, this, this bunny kit is available as well. If you wanted to stitch up a little bunny for, uh, the spring coming up here and yeah, so tomorrow we will, um, I think we'll finish this whole pillow. Ugh gonna make my living room look nice and springy I'm excited <laughs> and it feels like an unfinished like I'll, I'll be finishing an unfinished project because I've had this bunny finished for a while for like a couple of years just sitting around in a bin and now it can actually be something <laughs> so awesome you guys uh, thanks so much for the shares I will look through all the shares um, right now and we'll contact the winner or winners we might do a couple winners and that will uh we'll let you guys know who they are tomorrow and um, we'll if you did win we'll let you know tomorrow as well so thank you guys so much uh let me know if you're giving this a try share in the penguin and fish crafters group on facebook i'll see you there and have a fabulous evening good night <laughs>